Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today I want to talk about the sexiest tool in Photoshop, the crop tool. All right, so uh, there really is nothing sexy about the crop tool. And this tutorial will not make your images blow off the page and make these superb, phenomenal photos that your friends are going to drool over. But it will teach you everything you need to know about the crop tool so maybe your compositions can get a little bit better. So let's jump into Photoshop and dissect this tool, every little piece of it. Okay, so let's take a really in-depth look at the crop tool. I know this is nothing like uh, outlandishly amazing, all right? It's not gonna make your images just blow off the page. But recently I've, asked, I've been asked by uh, several people how I use uh, the composition elements later when I'm working in Photoshop. And really it comes down to the crop tool because yes, you can do all kinds of crazy things with the crop tool when it comes to your overlays. So the question is how do you use the golden ratio in, uh, in Photoshop and the answer is well it's in the crop tool so let's take a look at the crop tool we're gonna start up here at the top and we're gonna work away from the right hand side to the left hand side and the reason why we're gonna do that is because more than likely when you look at your menu bar up here you're probably working on the left hand side to the right hand side and by the time you get to about here you're like eh uh, the, I don't even know what these are, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So if we start from over here, this is actually where a lot of the valuable information is in the crop tool to set you up for success with the crop tool. So the first thing we have is delete cropped pixels. If you have that selected after you crop all those pixels on the outside of the image will be deleted. So let's take a look at this. So let's press C for the crop tool. That's the hotkey. I'll go ahead and click on our image here. And if we uh, just shrink this down and move it around and press enter, I don't have it set to delete cropped pixels. So what this means is if I press V for the move tool, I can now move my image around. You still see that on the left and right hand side, I still have my image. So let's take a couple steps back, control alt Z, just take a couple steps back to the very beginning of that, go back to that crop tool, we'll select delete crop pixels. And then when we do that again, now, well, if we press the V key and try to move this, it's still set as a background layer. So if we double click that and kind of move this around now, all those crop pixels are gone. All right. So that can be a destructive way to edit. So one of my suggestions is when you're in the crop tool to make sure this is unchecked. Now, the only reason why I would check that is say I was doing a composite and I have a bunch of different things that are going off the page. And as I move those things, uh, they all kind of move together. That's usually when I use the uh, delete crop pixels, but only in very specific specific instances will I do that. All right, that's kind of a hard thing to fathom right now without actually showing you an example. But usually in composite work, that's the only time I actually select it so that it will delete the crop pixels. So otherwise, just make sure that's unchecked so you will not be deleting your crop pixels. Now let's go over here and look at the settings. Now you're going to see use classic mode, show cropped area, auto center preview. The best way to do this is to actually go into that mode. So as we move this down, we'll actually make it look like we're going to crop something here and go into these settings. Now classic mode, if you look at classic mode, as you move your crop tool around, it will move the crop tool. That's the old classic way to edit that. So what they mean by classic is uh, maybe prior to CS or CC or CC, CS6 or something like that. Uh, but if we go and uncheck classic mode, you see how it moves the image around behind the crop now. Slightly different, all right? The other difference there is if you are in here and you go use classic mode and you try to click here with the crop tool, it's not going to make that cropped box like we're used to seeing. You actually have to go into that uncheck that. So now when we press the uh, crop button there, it automatically aligns us for a crop. I tend to prefer the, uh, the newer mode. I don't like the classic mode. So let's go ahead and make our image a little bit smaller here and crop it so we can see the rest of these. Now show cropped area. I tend to like to see the area outside of my image shown cropped. Okay, so I can see that gray area behind there. That's very important for me. Auto center preview, I always keep that one on. Uh, that way it's auto centering that preview. It makes it a little easier for me as I, as I move that crop tool around. And then enable crop shield. Now I tend to like that crop shield. It looks like you can change the color here. So if we wanted to, we could change the outside color there to any color we wanted to in the event that you don't like the default gray. I definitely prefer that dark gray color that's already kind of there rather than uh, 
my own color. But you know, if you so choose, you can you can pick a different color if you'd like. I would tend to pick, if you are gonna do this, I would pick a dark color so your eye kind of navigates right into the center. There could be a reason that you wanna use magenta for that if you'd like to, that's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that back to a dark gray color. And then obviously right here you have your opacity. You can set how, how opaque do you want that outer crop shield to appear. All right, so we'll go ahead and just go outside here. Now, the next thing we have next in line are our grids here. So we have different ways that we can do it. So by, by default, you have the rule of thirds that's kind of selected here. But as you go through, you can have a grid, you can have the diagonal. Uh, so if you have a diagonal type and you wanna make sure that, you, uh, that your composition is diagonal type, you wanna make sure that those, those sweeping, strong diagonal lines in your image, that's a good way to line it up. Then you have your triangle. So if you have a very strong triangular composition, this could be another tool to use. And then you have your golden ratio. Right, your golden ratio and your rule of thirds are slightly different. So your rule of thirds specifically divides your image into three equal blocks, whereas the golden ratio will uh, make it based off of the uh, the best aspect ratio for those thirds. I tend to like this one for compositional purposes, but that's up to, to you and what you choose. And then you have the golden spiral. So the golden spiral is uh, that, that spiraling type of composition that leads you right into the image. Now, if you look at my golden spiral here, you'll see that it's going from the top corner all the way around to this corner up here, which there's nothing in here that could be golden spiraling in that direction, okay? So that's not gonna work for me. So what can you do? You can actually cycle the orientation of many of these overlays. So something like the rule of thirds, if you look here, it's grayed out. You can't cycle through this, but the golden spiral, if you look at the hotkey there, it is shift O. Look at this hotkey, cycle overlay is O. So as you're going through this, you say, okay, what kind of composition do I want here? You press the O key and you keep pressing that O key until uh, you get the composition that you want. Well, now let's say we're on the uh, golden spiral and it's not spiraling in the right direction. If I press shift and then press O, notice how that spiral changes direction. Now this would be more of a composition for that here. Now, cause it'd be spiraling right into my focal point at that point, which would be a little bit better, but you can keep pressing shift O to spiral this spiral all the way around your image until it matches where you want it to be. And at this point you could then go ahead and crop based on what this golden spiral or golden ratio would be at that point. So that, that would be about, about right. You're coming in from this corner, bouncing off of this barn, wrapping around and going right into the center of that bumper. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back in here. You have auto show overlay. I always have that selected or always show overlay. Typically for me, I always want the overlay on there because it helps me with my crop. So I would definitely have always show overlay. If you're one of those people that doesn't want a better composition, put never show overlay. Now there might be a reason for that for you or not. I'm not sure. So I'll put always show overlay. Now we have straighten. This is the area where people will uh, find their horizon line that's crooked and then go up here to where it says straighten and straighten. So let's say that this is the straight horizon line in the background there, okay? So we can straighten out that off of the horizon line. Now I tend to think that I want this straightened off of the front bumper of the car. So maybe I could do that too. I could go right here and then straighten it out right here. And with the straighten tool, you're just clicking and holding and moving over and there you go. So that would make this front bumper here the straightest portion of the image. And that's up to you to decide. Now, uh, I know that where here I was in the Palouse in this area with an old homestead and in the background, uh, this definitely was uh, sweeping and swooping all over the place. Because if you've ever been to the Palouse in Washington, this is my first time, uh, it, it definitely has undulations of land that just sweep all over the place. So now we'll move over to the aspect ratio here. Now, before I do that, let me go ahead and click inside here and show you when you crop. Now, if you just, if you just drag right here from a corner, you can crop and make that size whatever size you want, okay? But what if you wanted to crop based off of your aspect ratio? So what I mean by that is you wanna crop based off of the size of the photo as it is right now. So the photo as this is right now is uh, a full frame sensor shot. So if I wanted to maintain that aspect ratio, if I press and hold shift, it will maintain the aspect ratio as it was shot. Okay, it's very important to know so that you're uh, making sure that you're staying within your confines. So say you're, you want an eight by 10 image and you press and hold shift while you do that, it'll maintain an eight by 10 image. 
So now another thing we need to look at here is the actual ratio. You can change the ratio here to whatever you want. So let's say uh, you want to make a print uh, with your favorite online printing service and you see that you have a full frame image here, but you want this to be an eight by 10. Well, how do you do that? Do you go to image size, um, change this to inches and then go eight by 10 and try to figure that out? No, what you do here is you go to ratio and right here you can have eight by 10. Now, if you don't have these here, I have several of these that I have saved uh, for my own purposes. Right here is four by five. I believe this comes with Photoshop. Four by five is also eight by 10. So what you can do is you can go to eight by 10 and now you have an eight by 10. This would be a crop for an eight by 10 vertical, but let's say you wanted an eight by 10 horizontal. Do you have to retype those? No, just press this button. It'll switch it back and forth for you. So it's a very cool tip. Now let's say you want this to be 8.5 by 11 and 8.5 by 11 is a typical sheet of paper. So you might be working on a document that needs 8.5 by 11. There you go. And if you want, you can go down here, you can go to new crop preset. So this will automatically say, okay, this is 11 by 8.5, press okay. And if you go down here, now in my save presets, you have 11 by 8.5. So if I wanted this to be maybe a 40 by 30, cause I was printing that size, this would be the way to go there too. Again, you wanna maintain that aspect ratio, press and hold shift as you do that. Another thing you do is press and hold Alt and Shift, and it will do it right from the center. See that? That's an awesome tip to know. So that you don't have to come in here from this corner and then come in here from this corner. You just press and hold Shift and Alt, and it does it right from the middle for you as you see fit. Now, if you like the crop that you have here, you can go ahead and press Enter, and that'll work. Let's say you're in the crop, though, and you don't want that. You can just press the Escape button. That'll do it, too. Otherwise, you can go up here, and you can say, no, that circle with the line through it means, no, I don't want you to crop it like this. And the check means, yes, please, go ahead and crop it like this. So while you thought you might have known everything there was to know about the crop tool, there is quite a bit of information that's in the crop tool that you may or may not have known. So remember, always look at those uh, delete cropped pixels. Make sure that that's unchecked unless you specifically want all the cropped area on the outside to disappear after you crop. Make sure you go into those settings. Do you like the classic mode? Do you like the new mode? How do you want that to appear? Do you want a border on the outside? What color around the outside do you want? What kind of grid do you want to look at when you're making your composition? Do you want rule of thirds? Do you want a grid? Do you want diagonal? Do you want triangle? Do you want golden ratio? Do you want golden spiral? Do you always want one? Do you never want one? There's quite a bit of things here in the crop tool. It's not just grab the crop tool, crop the image and go. You can actually be making some very interesting compositional uh, decisions with the crop tool if you know how to use it. So thank you very much for watching this. My name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. If you like this, please share it, um, like it, press the little plus one, give me a thumbs up, put it on your website, do whatever you want with it, but just share it. This is free knowledge going out to anyone out there. And if you like it, if you really like this, go ahead and subscribe because every time you subscribe, you're going to go ahead and get an email in your inbox every time one of these tutorials comes out every single Friday. Thank you very much for watching. I certainly appreciate it.